Welcome once again to my channel. Now, in this section, we are basically going to talk about the isolator method in uh, measuring precipitation over a particular area. And then, most of the time, um, for the isolator method, we use it when um, rain gauges are non uniformly distributed over um, some areas. So, we have uh, rainfall distributed non, non uniformly over some areas. And then, for isolator, we are connecting. Um, point of equal precipitation, points of equal mean precipitation or precipitation in this case. So let's take it for instance. We have um, a catchy kind of a diagram here. And then um, we have, um, let's say, some point outside here. And then we call it A. And then we have another station here. We call it B. We have another station here. We call it C. We have another station here. We call it D. And then um, we have another station here. We call it uh, we call it E. Then uh, let's take for instance for A here. We have the, the amount of precipitation here to be um, something like um, so let's start from C twenty one. And then let's see, this place is 19, and then this place is somewhere around um, 16, this is somewhere around 13, and then let's see, for this part it is around 10. Alright, so this is basically the amount of precipitation. Now it can be inches or millimeters or whatever you need. So let's take for instance here in inches. Now, basically, what we are going to do is um, if you look at the entire we have 21, 19, 16, 13, and then 10. What you have to do is to get a particular interval for your um, on your own. So you can get an interval of one and interval of two, depending on what the maximum uh, precipitation is, what the minimum precipitation is. So as you can see, our maximum precipitation here is. Um, 21 and then our minimum is 10. So basically when we use an interval of 2, that is just going to work. So um, if we have um, 21 over here, we have to get, um, draw, let's say, an imaginary um, station beside it. So if 21 is here, and then we can get, and then 19 is here. So we can get another station in between, which will be um, something like, um, let's call this one 20 inches and let's call this one um, the first station in this case so we have 19 here and then the next one has to be 18 so we have uh, 18 somewhere here and then let's call this one 18 inches and then, so if this one is 18 then the next one is basically going to be 16 so we have like 16 here the next one here is just going to be 14. So 14 will be uh, 15, 14, somewhere here. So let's get 14 here. So let's call this one 16, call this one 14. And then we have 13. We should have 12. So we can have 12 here. And then, so we have 12. And then we have our 10 here also. Now, to get the area, you have to take area within the catchy diagram, not outside the catchy diagram. So we have um, the first um, station here to be 21, B, 19, C, D, and then E. So realize that 21 is outside the And then so we can have P1 here to be this. We have. So um, if this is P1, then we have P2. P3, P4, and then P5. Now, how do we get the area? But then before that, um, the formula here is basically given by we have um, so, uh, to so let let's talk about the area. To get the area, we have the first area here to be this. Yeah. Now the area has to be within the catchy diagram. Any um, station outside the catchy diagram can be neglected. So we have the first area here to be here, and then between that is uh, for P1. Now, between P1 and P2, 
We have the area to be this side. And then between P2 and P3, the area has to be within the catchy diagram, not outside of it. And then P3, P4 has to be somewhere here. And then P4, and then whatever. You know, there is P5 here, but then it can be ignored because it is outside the catchy diagram. So it's just basically going to end here as the last part here. And then and then, so for the formula, what we are basically going to do is that we are given um, the P average, that's the precipitation average here, to be equal to, um, to basically what we are doing is to take the summation of, uh, we have P1 and P2, so between the two stations, what we are going to do is to get P1 plus P2, we divide by the average, and then we multiply by the area that we've gotten within um, this one so we have like multiplied by the area so we are going to do it for consecutive time and then we have the next one being p2 and then p3 divided by 2 multiplied by the area so we have area so let's say area 1 area 2 then it goes on and on then we divide by the total area so let's say a total by just summing the area here the area there and then the area in all but then if you look at the first one here we said it is P1 and, and then P2. But then there is an area here which is which only caters for P1. So in this case, it's going to change a bit where we have just this part. So we have um, the P1 multiplied by just the area over there. Because in order for us to find the average, we have to get two stations. But then if you look at P1 here, it's between the catchy diagram here and then just one station so we can't find the average we only find average when we have between the two stations so we have the first part just to be the area one multiplied by the precipitation now the next one is just going to be between p1 and p2 so we have p1 plus p2 divided by the average and then multiplied by let's say area two that is between this and that and then multiplied by the area then we find the average and then the next one is just going to be um, plus P2 plus P3 multiplied by, divided by 2, find the average, and then multiplied by area 3. So let's call this area 1, area 2, area 3, area 4, and then area 5. Yeah. And then the next one is just going to be, um, we have P, Three plus P four yeah, divided by two, and then we have uh, this area one, area two, area three, and then area four, and then the last part is just going to be you having. Um, so if you look at the last part over here, also um, it ends over here. This P five, which is outside the catchy diagram, so it's just basically going to be just one precipitation station. One precipitation station with the area. So we have that one to be P4 um, multiplied by just the area. And then that will be it for just that. Then we divide by the total area in this case. So let's do that. And see. So we have the average here being equal to. We have the area. So for the area, to get the area as we did from the first, uh, from the first video, realize that you just have to count the number of perfect square. If let's say one box is equal to 10 centimeter squared um, on the graph, because basically all the diagram is on the graph. So if it is one box like this, if the scale is giving us one box being equal to or one centimeter being equal to 10 centimeter squared, then which means that you have to count the number of boxes you can find within this area, and then you multiply it by the um, the 10 centimeter here. If it is more than if it is more than um, the box, if it's cutting more than the box, then we count that one. But if it's less than, it is passing through less than the total box, then we ignore it. So let's take for instance, we have the area here to be, we've done that, and we have the area here to be somewhere around 50 centimeter uh, squared. We have this one to be, uh, let's say, 100 centimeter uh, squared. We have this one to be 
a big area. So we have that one to be, let's say, uh, 150 centimeters square. We have this one to be um, somewhere around uh, 70, 70 centimeters square. And then the area here to be um, somewhere around um, 80 centimeters square. So basically what we are going to do is to just take area 1. So we said area 1 multiplied by P1. What is P1? The P1 here, we have the precipitation to be 20 inches. So we have A1, which is 100 here, multiplied by P1, which is 20 inches. So we have 20 here multiplied by, um, 20 here multiplied by the area. So area here is just 50 for the first part. And then we move to the second part, which is um, P1 plus P2. What is P1? P1 is 20 plus P2. P2 here is just 18 here yeah, divided by 2. And remember, then again, we are going to multiply the whole of that by the area 2. Area 2 is just 100. So we have 100 here for the output. And then we have plus. The next one is just P3 plus uh, P4. So P3 is um, 16. P4 is 14. So we have uh, this one to be 16 here multiplied by sorry, 15 plus 14 here divided by 2. All of this multiplied by um, A3. A3 is 150. So we have 150 here plus the next one. So for the next one, we have um, P4 and then 8. So P4 is 14 multiplied by 80. So we have 14 here multiplied by. Um, 80, 80 here, yeah. and then from there we divide by the total, the A total, A total is just, just adding up, uh, so it's just going to be 100, our first area is just 50, 50 plus 100, and then plus 150, plus 70, plus 80, so we sum them all up, and then um, whatever answer we get, it has to be in um, so inches because uh, the precipitation is inches. So let's see, let's take it for instance. We add the value to be let's say 200, and then we have 200 inches of rain. If it was to be in millimeters, then we have it in tw uh, 200 millimeters. But then also, if the question is asking for us to leave our answer not in inches, when you get the inches, or we should leave it in millimeters. When you get the inches, you get you then convert it to millimeters and that would be for that part so thank you very much for joining me in this session i hope this session will be helpful and i'll see you guys in the next session